Well, we haven't done a covered dish of any sort in a while. So what I've done is I've pulled a piece of cherry from stock. Uh, it was turned in 2020. And this is a piece of walnut that I plan on kind of insetting on the inside of this. And hopefully we'll be able to turn a knob from the thickness on this material as well. And I think we'll do some sort of an inlay around the knob area on this. And that's something we haven't done, uh, I don't think, ever. So, I don't know, we may do something in the knob. At this stage, I really don't know. Uh, you know, this thing has moved a ton when it's dried. And to show you the difference, so this here is five and three quarters. And about five and a half. Well, that's a strong five and a half. So, you know, that, that goes to show you how much wood will move. And that's why it's important that you've got that thickness in place so that you can turn it away and true it up again. Uh, this one, by the time it gets done, might be a little on the thin side, but we'll see. All right. Got to get a glue block on this and on this, and then we can get on the lathe. Welcome to this week's video. Uh, if you haven't been here before, my name is Jim. I'm the owner of Sprague Wood Turning, and we predominantly do uh, stuff on the lathe here, but sometimes I do some flat work as well, but not very often, it's mostly lathe work. Now, what I'm doing, if you haven't seen this before, is cleaning off the anchor seal that's on the bottom of this bowl, and then that way I can get a waste block glued onto the bottom of it. That is a center finding jig that you're seeing there. And because the tenon is oblonged, it's best to go all the way around the outside of it. And then that will give you a rough center as to where to place the awl. And the reason I'm putting a little point there is because I plan on shoving that little awl through a waste block and then sticking it on this piece of walnut and on the bottom of the cherry bowl. So that's hot melt glue that's been melted in an electric frying pan. I shove that through a hole that's drilled into the waste block. And then that way, it's centered perfectly where I want it to be. This is a 5 8 bowl gouge by Robust. And of course, this was a gift from Tracy. Thanks again for that. I wasn't, I, I did put a slight grind on there that I'm used to, but it's not exactly the grind that I like to use so you know I figured that I would I would try it on this piece and see how it goes overall I like the feel of the gouge I like the size of the handle and Tracy actually turned he did a really good job turning the handle it's actually quite nice and uh, but the grind isn't exactly what I'm used to so it worked well on the outside here I didn't really have too many issues at all with it uh, it held its edge, so that's always a, a bonus as well. And uh, I switched back to the Ellsworth gouge to do the inside of the piece. I was just a little worried about getting a catch working up under the, the lip on this piece. So that's why I switched back to a gouge that, I, that I'm comfortable with and I know. But once I get this grind down to the grind that I like, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of this in the future. So as you watch me true this piece up, if you've looked at the subscriber count, you'll know that we are now over 100,000 subscribers. Uh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can't imagine how grateful I am for that. Uh, still a little surprised at times that that many people want to tune in and listen to what I have to say here each week. But, uh, you know, it's been very re rewarding and absolutely awesome since coming to YouTube here three years ago and I do absolutely 100% thank you all for subscribing and um, I mean this milestone in pretty much any YouTubers career is is a milestone and of course the next one would be say a million subscribers which I don't think that I will ever get so this is probably the biggest milestone that I'll have and I do truly truly appreciate you all for subscribing and uh, watching my content each week thank you
after some shear scraping there you're looking at the surface and it's cut very clean ready for sanding a little bit of tear out at the top but it's going to be turned away anyway uh, so just going to true up the rim area and then when I flip the, the gouge over so that the flutes are basically pointing towards the right side I was getting some it, it's this footage is sped up but there's it's getting some catches and I just didn't really like the way that it felt so that's the Ellsworth gouge and I think probably the issue was the fact that there's less surface area like the the cutting area where it contacts the wood compared to the robust gouge but again once that grind is sorted out it should basically feel and perform the same way as the Ellsworth gouge. So I'm just going to work up underneath that little uh, lip or rim area get that running true. Very tough to get a clean cut surface when a gouge is right on its side like this. So in later clips you may actually see me elevate the uh, the cutting edge so it's more like a shearing cut than it is uh, when, it, when the gouge is laid on its side. The other thing too is when you'll see me swing this gouge around and go into the very center of it, I'm using basically the, the rim as a support, as a pivot around to uh, remove the material. It's so important to measure wall thickness that we don't become a member of the funnel club where you go through the bottom of your bowl because nobody wants that. And I'm looking for a thickness of a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch, thereabouts. I like big, heavy, beefy turning, so you know, that for me is, I don't really like to go any thinner than a quarter of an inch, but that's just me. And uh, anyway, once we get this piece trued up, and like always, for most people, you're going to have difficulty in the belly of the bowl. And if you look at how that gouge was elevated, that's what I meant by a shear cut. Again, more measuring. See how the gouge is much higher than before. And then pivot around using the rim as a support. Still a little thick. Because of the semi-enclosed nature of this bowl, I wasn't able to use the, the thickness gouge or gauge the way that you ordinarily would. So you'll see me flip it over and measure the upper part of uh, the bowl when, uh, when I need to. Uh, still a little thick in the belly of the bowl. Once we get that out, we'll be able to move on to sanding. If you've got a good sharp gouge and you're, you're doing these shearing cuts, you should come away with a fairly clean surface. These are the three and a half inch dipple discs from sandpaper.ca and I sanded this piece from 60 to 320 I typically don't go any higher than that on just straight wood pieces. And I'd like to personally thank sandpaper.ca again for kicking in $100 store credit for the 100,000 subscriber giveaway video. And uh, anyway, once I've got this sanded up, I'll use the 3 16 inch parting tool from Crown to cut in an area for the lid to sit. And then we'll be able to put our first coat of finish on. All right, here's the best part. I figured we would throw a coat of finish on this. Uh, this is gonna take three coats. So uh, while we're working on the lid, I'm also throw the finish on this. That way, hopefully this doesn't move. It's Water Lux Gloss. I think sometimes we forget that, you know, wood is an organic thing and 
wood that isn't sealed will absorb moisture and lose moisture a lot faster than a piece that is sealed up like I'm doing now. So it's important to get that first coat of finish on, especially since this piece is going to have a fitted lid on it. So you really want to limit the wood movement and by getting finish on it like this, that will certainly help. Well, just like walnut, you can't go wrong with cherry. There's some compression grain that gives you that chatoyance. You're seeing right there that shimmery grain. I had no idea that was in there. That's a pleasant surprise. Here's the inside. Not much of a lip on the inside. I don't think we really need that much. But this will get richer looking and darker with age. All right, let's work on the lid. As far as the lid is concerned, the bottom will be the piece that's uh, being held by the glue. And really what I'm looking for is a fairly tight fit inside of the opening on the bowl. And the reason for that is after sanding, it will probably be exactly the, the kind of the fit that we're looking for. Uh, it's best not to make a lid tight fitting to a bowl like this, because what will happen, this piece is maybe the exception to the rule because for the most part, this is quarter sawn and if you're curious where this came from this came from processing blanks so when i sawed a log in half and i took the pith of the center well each side of it has got quarter sawn grain and the benefit of using something that's quarter sawn for a lid is because you won't get a lot of movement out of it and where if it's flat sawn where you see predominantly like cathedrals on the top part of it then that's going to move more than quarter sawn grain so if you're ever debating on making something like this look for a piece of wood that's quarter sawn and you you'll see it like when i initially showed it at the very beginning how the grain structure runs almost uh, vertically through it that's what you're looking for and that's what i mean by quarter sawn I should also mention that this parting tool is freshly sharpened and you want nice crisp clean edges here or else you'll see it after the inlay goes in. So having a nice sharp parting tool is the key to doing these inlays as well. So it looks cleaner. All right, we're gonna use the Mother of Pearl from Starbond. Uh, it looks really, really awesome with walnut or a dark wood but this is a pretty small inlay area so i want to make sure that i get the fine material to inlay in here and not have some real heavy coarse stuff so i'll kind of run it through this i think what we'll do we'll just pick it up from there get rid of any dark stuff that you see definitely don't want that If your inlay area is a lot larger than what we're inlaying here, then it's fine to use that real big material. But I I just didn't really care for the look of it. And I've you know I've encountered this in the past where you know smaller inlays like this I find look better when they're all uniform, basically uniform in size, and you don't have big heavy chunks in there taking up basically the whole one side of the inlay. Now that I've got my inlay material in, it's important to make sure that it's level. And for this piece, we're going to be using the thin CA glue from Starbond. And this worked out so well that I think I only had to do one more application of the glue uh, prior to sanding it afterwards. So it worked out fantastic. All right, that's it. I'll uh, keep an eye on this for the next 10 or 15 minutes. And if the level drops off, I will give it some more. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Sand this back. 
this should look great. All right, so I'm gonna try and tool this. <laughs> I don't know exactly how that's gonna go. It's probably just gonna rip it out, but uh, I thought it was worth a shot, so let's give it a go. Either that or it's gonna be a lot of sanding. For the observant people in the crowd, you may have noticed that the whole top of the lid is covered in CA glue. And the reason why I did that is because I was a little worried about glue staining around the inlays and around the inlay area. So I figured it was best to saturate the wood. I went out and put another coat of glue on it in the morning while I was doing other things, but it hadn't fully cured up on me. So then I hit it with the accelerator to uh, cure it. I'm using the Phoenix from Hunter Tool Systems and it's great to get underneath that little lid area or sorry little knob area and that mother of pearl inlay tooled awesome with the Phoenix. I was really happy with that because I wasn't looking forward to all the sanding. So this was sanded from 60 to 180 and then I checked to see if there was any filling that needed to be done and sure enough there was. So from here on, it's from 180 to 320, and you'll see me stop the lathe at some point and do some spot sanding and then blend it all in. And we'll be able to move on to the next thing. Now that the inlay is all done, I, I roughly had it sized yesterday, I knew, oversize. So here I am just kind of Taking very light cuts, you don't want to be too aggressive here. There it fit down inside of, of the bowl, which is exactly what I'm going for. So like I said earlier, after sanding, you should have the right slack in the lid. That way it doesn't bind in the future if, it, if the lid does happen to move. So now I'm just using the parting tool to fit for the recess where I want the lid to fit down in there. And again, I don't want this to be proud of the surface. I want it to have be down just level or just slightly below so there's about a sixteenth of an inch to go there luckily that bowl was deep enough that I could stick the whole thing inside of it for that sizing or else you'd have to use uh, some sort of calipers or something to get your measurements so still not quite right I'll take a little pass with the parting tool and then we'll be able to use a little bit of sandpaper to clean up the tapered area that goes down inside of the bowl actually it isn't tapered it's it's straight i didn't care for the thickness on this at this point so i figured that I mean, there was no point in having a big heavy lid anyway so i'm going to thin this out a little bit uh, i didn't measure it but uh, it looks to be somewhere around a half inch and then once i've got it thinned out enough we use the parting tool to take it off the waste block and then we'll be able to finish the underside of the lid. And there's what it looks like down inside of the bowl. Really happy with that fit. And I love the look of this piece actually. On to the vacuum chuck. It's important to clean off the neoprene seal before you use it. If there's finish on the piece that you're putting on it, it can actually kind of mark up your work so you definitely want to make sure that there's no foreign bodies in that neoprene seal before you mount the pieces on here not really that big of a deal for this because there was no finish on there but i thought that i would point that out and just like the top the bottom side was sanded to 320 as well Before we put a coat of finish on the lid, I figured that I would prep the bowl. That way we can do both of them at the same time. That's the Triple E buffing compound from the Be All Buffing System. I do have an issue getting that large wheel 
uh, into the center area on the bowl. So you'll see me come back with a smaller wheel here. I'm like, yeah, couldn't get that. And that way I was able to knock that down and get it ready for basically the next coat of finish after it's been cleaned off with some denatured alcohol. And then um, that way we won't have any issues with the next coat sticking to your work. Well, good morning. This is the second coat of Waterlux Gloss. Getting a few emails and, and questions about this method and people are asking me if I buff after the last coat and the answer to that is no. I wipe it on the way you see me do it here. I don't wipe it off. There's usually three coats and then after the last coat goes on, exactly like this coat, it just sits and I let the finish harden. There's no buffing afterwards. What you see is what you get. Well, two coats might do it for this. Probably give it three anyway. Cherry is, cherry is a beautiful wood. Really nice chatoyance there. As I said yesterday. All right, let's get some finish on the lid. I'm dying to see what that looks like. I'm just gonna have to use our hands on this one. People may remember the inlay video that I did here not too long ago. And when we used the CA glue, it had massive amounts of foaming. Now we determined that that was a humidity issue. And when I did the inlay in the top of this piece, I left it out in my workshop where I've got the air conditioning running. And there was absolutely no foaming at all. And I didn't have any issues this time around because I know that there may be some people wondering about that. But that is the story on that. The CA worked great this time. There you go. That first coat will no doubt get sucked up by the, by the wood. So I'm not real concerned about uh, any fingerprints of me on this right now. I'll probably do the same thing again tomorrow. And then uh, I might switch it back and forth just to do the last coat if there's a last one that's needed. Anyway, we will see you when we do the bottom. After three coats of the Waterlux gloss, this piece is ready to be parted from the waste block. Um, I'll probably get another three or four uses out of this waste block before you get into the screws and you have to replace it. Uh, again, using the vacuum chuck here, I, I know that I've said this a number of times, but if you can swing the cost of getting one of these vacuum chucks, I highly recommend it. It will increase production and it will make your life a lot easier on the lathe. Once the tooling's done on the very bottom of this, it was sanded from 180 to 320. Uh, it's all just plain saw and grain on the bottom of these bowls, so they're quite easy to sand. Just before we have a last little chat about this piece, very curious to see what you think about it, so please leave a comment down below. All right, let's have a last little look at this beautiful covered bowl. I had no idea that all that compression grain was underneath that anchor seal, so that was a pleasant surprise. That is for sure. Again, I'll put up some rotating footage at the end like I always do. That mother of pearl inlay is awesome i really really dig that and it goes really well with the walnut so you know here in canada with the the black walnut and the cherry those are the two number number one woods as far as i'm concerned in canada uh it's absolutely beautiful uh the size on this is eight and a half inches across and four or four and a half inches tall i can't remember i think it's four and a half from the top of the knob to the base and I absolutely love this form and hopefully you guys too do as well. Uh, as far as thickness is concerned, quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch in thickness throughout the piece. And it is for sale. So if you're interested, send an email to spragwoodturning at gmail.com and I can disclose the price in case this is a gift. Three coats of Waterlux gloss is what's on here. I should show you the bottom. So that's still going to need at least two coats of finish and then it's ready to go. And we'll set this down. So, other great news, Designer Epoxy, uh, originally the 
Uh, the promotion was from 1 July to 1 September, and Gabe tells me that he's removing that restriction. So until further notice, here's what you'll get when you order uh, products from Designer Epoxy. You can use code INLAYGEM at checkout, and you're going to receive five color bags. You're also going to get 10% off your order, and you're going, to, you're going to get free shipping within Canada and the continental USA. So that is a fantastic deal. If you've been waiting to try Designer Epoxy, now is the time to do that. And thanks again to Designer Epoxy and Gabe for removing that restriction and uh, supporting my channel, along with all of my other sponsors, sandpaper.ca. Again, $100, $100 store credit. We're all going to do this next week. So there's going to be the three gallon kit from Designer Epoxy, the $100 store credit from, from uh, sandpaper.ca, and of course the giveaway that I make, whatever I make next week, that's also going to go next week as well. So big week. So for Designer Epoxy and sandpaper.ca, of course, that's only for continental USA and Canada. So Designer Epoxy, by itself two words and then sandpaper we're not going to do the dot ca because that didn't work just put sandpaper in the comments down below and you'll be eligible for that draw but again that's only for canada and the usa when it comes to my project that i make each giveaway i ship worldwide so i don't care where you live leave a comment down below and if you're the winner i will ship it to you worldwide all right so I've got a busy weekend coming up of course my son's getting married and i'll be probably a little slow answering comments Friday, maybe not so bad, but Saturday, of course, is going to be a busy day. So, um, but I will get to them eventually, but please leave a comment down below because that helps my channel. Uh, YouTube sees that and then they'll push my content to others. All right, big, big video coming up next week. So please come on back for that. Till then, take care, stay safe. Don't forget the bell and please share my videos with your friends. And that thumbs up will always help as well. You guys are awesome. See you next week.